In this video, we're going to apply our newly discovered rule for computing derivatives of vector value functions, and we're going to frame it in the context of computing velocities given the position function as r of t. So we can indicate this derivative in a number of different ways. We could call it r prime of t. We could call it the time derivative of r. Or we could call it velocity of t if it's understood that velocity is what we mean by v here. All of those work out the same way. We simply take the derivative of each component by itself. So imagine covering up the e of t for a moment. What's the derivative of cosine? It's sine, oh wait, no, it's negative sine of t. And then we put a comma to say that's totally separate from the following work. We ignore the cosine completely, and we take the derivative of e to the t, and that e to the t derivative is of course just e to the t again. And that's it. Couldn't get any simpler if you have your derivative rules carefully memorized and uh, the skill set built up there. Let's do some more practice. Let's find the velocity of a particle. Again, position is given here to start with. It's a little more complex, but we'll just call this q prime of t. And if it's a sum, we just take element by element here. So we're going to have two t's. Remembering that square root of t is easier to differentiate when it's written as a power, t to the 1 half. And so we're going to have 1 half t to the negative 1 half. And that's a perfectly acceptable way to write that. You don't have to write it in square roots unless you like to. Coming to the second term, the y component, we have the derivative e to the 4t. And the derivative of any exponential is the same exponential again. But then we had 4t's in the exponent, so we have to apply the chain rule. We take the derivative of the exponent and that just gives us a 4 multiplier. Then we keep going by subtracting the derivative of t, which is 1. And we just keep going. Again, the beauty of this is that we don't have any new rules to learn. It's simply applying the rules to multiple components all at the same time. Derivative of ln of t, that's one of the interesting ones. It's 1 over t. And then remembering, is it, wait, 1 over t, how does that work again? When possible express your functions as powers. This is t to the negative 1. So the derivative is negative 1 times t to the negative 2. Bring the power down front, subtract 1 from the power. And again, if you have any hesitation about the derivative rules and applying them in different situations, head back to one of the earlier units or do the practice problems from this unit. And it's just an exercise in practice until you get the skills and becomes almost muscle memory to compute these derivatives. Again, there's nothing new happening. It's simply taking the derivative of each component when you're starting with a vector-valued function.